Hey, you guys, it's William Colling from Movie Vlogs, and Ollie Alexander has revealed his Eurovision 2024 music video for the song Dizzy, Will Our Head Spin? Damn, Bon! Hey, you guys! Hey, William! Should we watch and react? Let's, Let's do, do this! this. The hype for this has been building for months. Ali was, of course, the front man for years and years, but this song is his moment to start releasing music under his name. No longer years and years, this is from Ali Alexander. Hitting Palais. Oh, Ooh, okay. A little haunting. He's my favorite pocket-sized fairy. Amazing. Beautiful man. He's a dreamer. Giving me Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz. Arching that back. This is dreamy. Very gentle. So take me there. Won't you make me oh, okay, we're right into oh, it. Oh, this music video is so expressive. Very Pet Shop Boys. Mm -hmm. Ooh, are those some minor chords? We had a little change there. got a swirling feel. Like This sounds quite Australian to me. Very Savage Garden, Darren Hayes kind of vibe. Oh. I like it. But also very oh, years wow. and years. The production is really interesting. And we're back into it just like that. <laughs> Our man is playing in the dirt, playing in the sand. <laughs> House to playground. This is very cool staging. Oh. That was a crotch shot. Oh, booty Oh, perk. I like this. I like the choreo, it's almost broken down. Ooh. Oh, wow. Danny L. Harrell! Woo! Love that English accent. Oh, that oh. body popping, body breaking. This is interesting right here. I like how haunted this sounds. These are good harmonies here. Until they never end. Give me that falsetto. This bit doesn't feel big enough. I wish this bit was bigger. Like they're getting electrocuted. Again! Oh, and that's over. How long was that? Oh, wow. Look, that didn't feel like three minutes. That did not feel like three minutes. And to me, that is a good sign. Um. Yeah, where to start? So this is a very gentle love song, right? Not all love songs have to be, yeah, yeah, woo, Whitney Houston. No, this is like a song filled with yearning. He wants to be made dizzy by someone's kisses. And it has this pull along feel, sort of the way it's produced pulls you along the whole time. And it's very pleasant. And sometimes I use that as an offensive term like vanilla, but this has its edge because it's not really predictable. I feel like we get into the chorus straight away and then we're back into the chorus like very quickly. And then we have this, I don't wanna, it's not spoken word, but there's that spoken section where you've got Ollie in the background saying his thing, doing his thing, letting it loose, working the lip. I think about RuPaul's Drag Race, tight lip sync. But you know what I mean? It's like very effectively layered. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. It doesn't follow a predictable path. 
and it's layered in a really interesting way. Um, those harmonies here sound quite nice. Full disclosure, I always feel a little uh at Eurovision when we have those types of harmonies, like live. Sometimes harmonies sound better in studio than they do live, and I don't mean about vocal perfection, it's just I like the electronic vibe of this, and I do wonder how do you translate that to the stage. Um, in any case, yeah, this is, again, very pleasant. It's loopable. This should be a radio hit. I quite like it. Now, in terms of the competition, this is another matter, right? Because songs that are great for the radio or streaming don't always translate to the stage. So, I mean, this is to be seen. I like the choreo for the video, but it's also very mismatched. Like, I don't know, not everything has to be tortured. To me, the dancing is almost too much, but not enough, if that makes sense. Like, there's a lot going on. At one point, he's like Schmeagol in that movie, Lord of the Rings, kind of crawling in the dirt. Um, I am in no way underwhelmed. I am not underwhelmed. But I guess my concern is, would I be motivated to pick up the phone and vote for this? Probably not, but I would really like it and I would stream it and listen to it. So I guess maybe we should take a step back and say, winning Eurovision does not have to be the goal. Sometimes the goal can simply be, not simply be, can be having a good song that people want to stream that becomes a radio hit. And I feel like this is what that is. This is a great way for Ali to launch into this new era of releasing music on his own terms, in his name, not as years and years. Um, but is it going to win Eurovision? It doesn't feel that way to me. Of course, I haven't seen the staging. But again, it doesn't matter because this is a solid entry. This is going to get radio play <clears throat> all over the place. And that's good for the contest. And that's good for Ali too. Three minutes of fabulousness. Let me just tell you one thing. Actually, I'll tell you many things. What makes Ali Alexander so amazing is that he understands expression, right? This is a man who has been in a major TV series, It's a Sin, kind of just basically executing the sentiment in the LGBT community throughout the 80s and the 90s and just kind of just putting it out there, burying his soul. He is expressive. We are getting movement here too, right? My man can move, he can morph, he can shapeshift. Amazing. Vocals, that has never been a problem. Three, top three albums, two of which were number one, can I just say. I mean, Communion, Palo Santo, what's the one I love? Night Call, his most recent work, which was released in 2022. Amazing. I have been a fan of the years and years for a very long time and they dominated the charts. You know, we're not talking Bonnie Tyler, 1976. We are talking 2020, in the 2020s, right? So even as of 2022, this man was churning out hits, churning out hits and a live performer they are. And one thing I love about Oleg Alexander is that he can collaborate, you know? Collaborations with Kylie Minogue, with Girls Aloud. Everything about Ollie Alexander is A game, A class. But for today's generation, while straddling the merits and the um, achievements of what happened in the 80s, the 90s, he's, he's in a group years and years, but actually, he's pretty much a solo star. <laughs> And I'm not talking so lunch, honey. He is pretty much a solo star and he does it so well. Also, I do wish there was more of a moment. Like you could have moments in different ways. It doesn't have to be the Mariah Carey big note or like the key change. This has moments that change, you know, it's dynamic. But I'm like, is there that winning moment that in the recap you would see and be like, oh, I got to vote for that? I'm not sure. Um, the chorus coming really early, and then quite quickly after that again, in some ways it's like giving up what you got and then having to fill the time with other stuff. I don't know. I almost wish they had teased the chorus a bit more, like it took more time to get there, and then the song wouldn't feel, feel like it's sort of repeating itself, because there is a sense to me at certain moments like, oh, this is more of the same, but then there's that fantastic um, spoken section haunting back. Look, I'm clearly very conflicted. I'm clearly very conflicted because the consumer in me, like the person who lives in the real world and just listens to music, plays the radio, the consumer in me is like, I love this. But then like the Eurovision voter in me is kind of like, I enjoy this, but I'm not gonna vote for this. Um, 
So yeah, make of that what you will. I will say this, I don't think anyone else could sing this. This song fits perfectly with Ali Alexandra's voice. You can tell this was finely crafted, finely tuned for him, and that connection really comes through. He's clearly responding to the music because that was a performance he just gave in that music video. Broken down, angles, yeah. A lot of people approach Eurovision with songs having a message, having something that you, yeah, something you want to push through. Some approach Eurovision as propaganda for a political ideology. My man is not doing that. He's just doing what he does, which is crafting really good, brilliant pop and performing it well. Dizzy is not... There is no clear message. It's a banger. You dance to it. You're, you get down at the Euro Club. You're going to hear it in the grand final of Eurovision 2024. And hopefully you'll be picking up the phone to vote for it. You know, some people say this is safe. What's wrong with safety? <laughs> what is wrong with safety? And, uh, you know, this is safe in the sense that, yeah, you can hear it on the radio, but isn't that what you want? Don't you want it to be a pop hit? Oh, another thing, another thing, another thing. So, Eurovision for a long time, I mean, Sam Ryder was the exception where his song got to number two. Um, oh, I suppose May Muller was also top 10. But for a long time in the UK, Eurovision songs are kind of in their own lane and they don't really chart in the top 20. This will chart, honey. This will chart and this will do well and this will bubble until May and hopefully beyond May. This will... When Oli Alexander said that he wanted to start releasing some songs under his own name... This is what he meant. You launch like this and hopefully your follow-up will just be slaying and then the album will slay and more music will drop and others will support this project as I am in support of this project. There's a major part of me that gets really excited when those who are credible in my view and have considerably achieved in the pop world decide that they want to go to Eurovision. Whilst this may be true in many other countries where their biggest stars often show their work at Eurovision, in the United Kingdom, it has been in recent years, actually not even that recent, I would say with the notable exception, even Sam Ryder, I mean, he was TikTok, right, before this. This was his first album, right? A lot of stars in the UK shy away from Eurovision because they feel that it could be signal the end of their career. Well, Oli Alexander is a different breed. This is a, somebody that has achieved three top three albums, lots of singles that have gone gold and platinum. He is slaying in the festival circuit, singles chart, album charts, and still goes into Eurovision believing that yeah, he's excited about it. This is not, oh, we would like you to. This is like, oh, I would like to do this and I'm really excited. When he broke the news at Strictly, there was just excitement. There was pure joy. There was ecstasy about it. And I love that. I love that. This is a contest that is very dear to me. I have loved Eurovision for a long time. And I'm excited when somebody that I like also likes Eurovision. And, you know, Oli Alexander is treating this as an opportunity, bringing his fan base with him. Yeah? I absolutely love this. I want to read some comments from the Wee Wee Blogs website. Lean Dirt Jan says, I don't know if I was expecting too much because I really like years and years. My first impression is that I'm slightly underwhelmed because I don't really hear anything fresh. I like the synth vibe, very British 80s, and the start is promising, but the chorus feels thin, unsurprising, and there's too much of it. I was hoping for something more striking, I guess. They'll probably throw a lot at the staging, and Ollie is very experienced, but this doesn't scream contender to me. This is Itchy Monkey. UK, listen up. You need to shift the music pattern over the coming years to more complex artistic songs than sticking with the standard 90s bop. They don't work. Rock it up or do something, but no more pop. Despicable Annie says, the song is nothing special, but at least it'll be easy to sing for Ollie. Considering his shortcomings with live vocals, it'll hugely depend on the performance, but I don't think the UK's result will be as amazing as many expected. Pink Bucket Hat says, the bit in the chorus where it goes from minor to major at the end is so awkward. 
I kind of liked that. I thought it gave an edge. Ted says, how much can you cram into a three minute song? Obviously the verses have been sacrificed. That second one in particular is a mere cameo. The chorus will be one that either sticks in your head to hum all day or becomes so annoying, especially that irritating mm -hmm, which is already rubbing me up the wrong way. I'm here for the spoken bridge, love that part. How he performs that part live has a question mark over it for me as it goes straight into the acapella chorus. Flo says, it's quite monotonous and I feel like I have already heard everything this song has to offer after the first 20 seconds. I don't like to say it, but I wrote a song was a much stronger entry and we all know how well that did at Eurovision. Luke says, defo top five finish, surely. So well produced and such a banger. Scotty writes, doesn't seem fair that the UK always faces harsher criticism than other countries in Eurovision. The fact Ali Alexander is a well-established, internationally known, and current artist that has a track record of charting well in this country automatically means he deserves no lower than a top 10 position. Someone of that caliber shouldn't be finishing any lower. Okay, now, Scotty, I do agree that sometimes the UK gets extra harsh criticism. At the same time, I don't think you vote on reputation. You vote on the song and the performance on the night. But I do believe Ollie will pull this off. Dicky writes, Just heard the track and I'm happy. It's actually a very sweet love song, a soft yearning and gentle refrain. That will contrast with some of the darker and more edgy songs this year. I was expecting something a bit more epic, perhaps, but this is great and it's already in my head. Well done, Ollie. Kenny Koala Bear says, I really like this. It's a fantastic, catchy tune. I hope it does well. However, personally, I prefer the zaniness of the code by Nemo, which was released yesterday. A lot of love for Switzerland in the comments here. Leanne writes, of course, years and years did not disappoint. What a banger. Well, that's what we think. What do you think? Is your head spinning and are you dizzy? What suggestions do you have for the live performance? What do you hope to see? Let us know here on Wee Wee Blogs. The one question I do have, though, is Oli Alexander on Pinterest? Because if he, if he is on Pinterest, he needs to unveil his mood board. And while you're at it, follow Wee Wee Blogs on Pinterest, and we will see you later. Bye! And we'll see you later. Bye!